All right, everybody, this is it. Final cornerback video. We made 14 videos on cornerback prospects. And it was necessary because there are so many, and some of them are really good and really interesting, but it's good to have it done. So last cornerback video, and then we're on to cleanup. Kamal Haddon of Tennessee, the Volunteers, 23, 6'1", 196 pounds, so good size. Almost 31-inch arms, workable, 8.5-inch hands, that's small. Uh, PFF actually really likes this guy and puts him in the fourth. CBS and ESPN put him more in like the fifth or sixth, well, sixth round range, I think. And the database actually puts him all the way down in the seventh. So the smaller big boards pull him down. Um, <clears throat> he missed a good chunk of 2023 with an injury, so he only had 19 tackles. Still had eight passes defense, three picks, good PFF grade, really good, actually. So there's something here. Year before that, he had a couple picks as well. Uh, 51 tackles, much worse PFF grade. So it seemed like he was headed somewhere and then he got hurt and he kind of got stunted by that. So he'll be able to play outside in the NFL, I think, because he's big enough. He's got good size. He's good with his press. His his jam at the line of scrimmage is good. Good footwork to stay in front of his guy before he chucks him. He can stick with his man throughout the route. He showed the ability to have the reactive athleticism to stick with his man. He can track deep balls well. He can keep up with the vertical routes well. And he's stronger than the average cornerback. He does have a little bit of uh, strength going on, which is going to help him in certain situations, especially with his press. Now, he's still recovering from the injury, which is one reason why he didn't test. He doesn't have top-end speed. <clears throat> and because of that, he's going to struggle a little bit more with things like tracking the deep ball and sticking with guys in man. And he's grabby, so he's going to attract flags. So there are some definite issues here. And despite him being strong, despite him being a fairly good uh, player in terms of having play strength, he's not a good tackler. And maybe he can get better. He is, he, he's got good size, but I mean, he had good size last year, and I don't think he was a good tackler. So this is an issue. So there's some stuff to like, but the tackling thing is a big thing. I got to put him down in the low end of the draft, especially with that injury. Like, there are plenty of cornerbacks you can get in this draft that aren't coming off a non-trivial injury. Why not get one of them instead of a guy who is coming off a significant injury? So, seventh round, I think, is fair. And there is some stuff I like. I like the size. I like the fact that he'll probably be able to play on the outside. The ball skills are notable, but <clears throat> the injury, I think, makes him less appealing than these other guys because he hasn't gotten past it yet. And it might linger on into the 2024 season. And why would you do that when there are a ton of cornerbacks in this class that aren't coming off a big injury? Um, next up, we have Willie Drew, small school guy, Virginia State. The Virginia State um, Spartans, I think. I looked it up, but I can't remember for sure anymore. I think it's the Spartans. Uh, six feet tall, 191 pounds, 32-inch arms. So he's got good size, actually. Uh, nine and a half inch hands, testing, mediocre 40, but a really good 10 yard split. So the acceleration's nice. Bench press was kind of whatever, kind of bleh. Big boards. Walter has some weird crush on him and puts him in the fourth. ESPN seventh. CBS deep undrafted. Big board de aggregate puts him in the seventh. Barely drafted. Um, production over the last two years is actually remarkable, but he was playing at Virginia State. That needs to be remembered. Six interceptions, 34 passes defensed, which sounds great. I mean, those ball skills, those will partially translate. His ability to make plays on the ball will carry over to the NFL for sure. So <clears throat> that's great. He's got above average length, makes a lot of plays on the ball because of it. His change of direction and his burst is pretty good. I know he didn't do those drills at the combine, but he does have change of direction and burst. His press is good as well. He uses the long arms well. He uses footwork to jam receivers at the line. And he's got a nose for taking the ball away. He's got 11 interceptions over the last two years. So he's not just making plays on the ball. He's taking it away. His um, flipping of the hips is segmented. He, he, he When he's going from his back pedal and he turns around to sprint downfield, it just doesn't look right. He doesn't look comfortable doing it. And his click and close is hesitant to me. I think he is a little bit tentative to just go gun downhill. So got to clean that up. 
played low competition in his college career. I think he started at JMU several years ago and then transferred to Virginia State, which makes you wonder, maybe he couldn't even cut it at JMU because that's a still a smaller school, but it's a very competitive one and had to go to Virginia State to find the right-sized pool for him. And he's physically weak and not going to do much in run support. So really interesting, right? Like that ball production has to get your attention. It demands your respect. So I don't know if he's a fit in Seattle because he can't support against the run. He can't tackle. But somebody out there is probably going to look at this and go, those ball skills will translate. And this guy belongs in the NFL as a cornerback somewhere. Somebody that can live with the bad tackling. So sixth round pick for me. I don't think Seattle would take him in the sixth because of the tackling. But somebody should throw up the dart here. Willie Drew has too much interesting potential to not be worth something around that sixth round. All right, uh, final guy, final cornerback in this video and final of this series is Tarheeb Still. Tarheeb Still of Maryland, the Terrapins. Six feet flat, 189 pounds, so size is okay, but short arms, 29 and 5 eighths, 9 and 1 eighth hands. Testing was lackluster, slow, not good acceleration, a little bit of good stuff on the vert, but poor broad, so overall the testing was more bad than good. ESPN and PFF, um, ESPN actually puts him in the fifth, and PFF puts him in like the early sixth. CBS has him undrafted, the big board has him back into the seventh. Uh, last two years, <clears throat> been productive for Maryland, over 90 tackles, six for loss, five interceptions last year, six overall, so ball hawk. But mysteriously, despite his ability to take the ball away, he barely ever breaks the pass up, which is weird. You almost never see that. You might see it the other way around, but you never see this, right? He's got six interceptions and three passes defensed over the last two seasons. Okay, PFF grades. While he was at Maryland, he played inside and outside, so he built up some flexibility at the college level. I don't know if it'll translate to the NFL, but building flexibility is good. He's got a cerebral understanding of routes based off his read. He's able to make reads based off what he's seen and go make plays based off what he sees. He's sure-handed. He's got really good hands. Maybe he should transition to receiver. I don't know. He's bringing in everything. And I think he plays the run fairly respectably. He comes up and runs support and gets involved in a positive, useful way. However, I don't think he'll be able to play outside in the NFL because he's got the short arms. He doesn't have the speed to stick with receivers in man, so you're going to have to leave him in zone, which hurts his value. He's going to get a lot of flags because when he gets beat, and he gets beat plenty because of his speed, he's going to get grabby and get flagged. And while he is good in run support, and while I think he gives effort, he's not really a form tackler, and he does miss too many tackles because of it. And he does have short arms, so it's harder to wrap up. So kind of a run-of-the-mill, slot-only corner, and probably only play zone. Still kind of like just adequate as a run defender as well. It feels like his best asset is his hands. And how often does that matter? Not often enough to offset everything else. So UDFA, I don't think he's worth a pick. There's too much stuff that he can't do. And the stuff that he can do might not matter that much. Okay, so that'll do it for the corners. That'll do it for this video. Thank you everybody for watching the series. Only has a few more videos left, and we're just in cleanup mode now. We've looked at everybody who's even slightly appealing as a prospect at this point. Everybody left is somebody who is either not going to get drafted, but might be interesting to the team, or will barely get drafted if they're lucky. So, not a lot left. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of this journey. I will see you guys tomorrow. Maybe I'll see you tonight on Twitch. Go Hawks, and soon we'll have as complete a picture as I can provide.